So a very good morning to all. So this is a very important topic, fibrous dysplasia. So it can come as a question as a classification of fibrosis lesions and write in detail about fibrous dysplasia. So what is fibrous dysplasia? It is a tu developmental tumor-like condition that is characterized by the replacement of normal bone by an excessive proliferation of cellular fibrous connective tissue intermixed with irregular bony trabeculae. Now coming to the classification, fibrous dysplasia can be classified as monostotic form, polystotic form, and craniofacial fibrous dysplasia. Again, polystotic form can again be classified as Jaffs type or Jaffs Lichtenstein type and McEwen's Albright syndrome. So uh, in Jaffs Lichtenstein type, there is multiple bone involvement and irregular macular pigmentation on the skin that is called as cafe oleate spots. And in McEwen's Albright syndrome, there is severe progressive bone involvement with cafe oleate skin pigmentation and precocious puberty. So this monostotic fibrous dysplasia is the most common form and the clinical term leontiasis ossea has been applied to cases of fibrous dysplasia, which affects the maxilla or facial bone. And this, the patient has, is giving a leonine appearance. So this is a clinical picture that is causing asymmetry on the face. There is progressive enlargement of one side of the face. And this is the most common type of fibrous dysplasia that is monostatic fibrous dysplasia. There is no gender predilection and it is more common in children and young adults. And so it often quizzes at puberty. So 25% it involves the head and neck and the maxillary is, uh, has got a more predominant uh, appearance. And in maxilla, it involves mainly the zygomatic process and when it affects the mandible, it mainly affects from the foramen, mental foramen to the angle of the jaw. So the first clinical sign is a painless swelling or bulging of the jaw. And the swelling usually involves the labial or buccal plate and seldom the lingual aspect. And when it involves the mandible, it causes a protuberant excrescence of the inferior border of the mandible. So this is a picture that is showing the enlargement of the face and giving a leonine appearance. There is malalignment, tipping or displacement of the teeth and tenderness may ultimately develop. In polystotic fibrous dysplasia, this was first recognized by Weil in 1922 and it was described by Albright. Clinically, 25% of the cases are involved and two or more bones are involved. Whereas in monostotic fibrous dysplasia, only a single bone is affected. And this polystotic fibrous dysplasia, there is more of female predilection and 50% have got head and neck involvement. These uh, other sites are the clavicles, pelvic bones, scapulae, long bones, metatarsals and metatarsals. Because of the severe bone changes, spontaneous fractures, this is a common complication of fibrous dysplasia affecting the weight-bearing bones. And when the femur is affected, it may cause curvature of the femur that is called a shepherd crook's deformity. In polystotic fibrous dysplasia, as we have already told, there are two types, Jack Lichtenstein type and Albright syndrome. Here also, the, you can see the progressive enlargement of one side of the face and uh, the palatal enlargement of one side of the palate. This is a, these are the cafe olate pigmentation that is seen in polystotic fibrous dysplasia. In Albright syndrome, in addition, the female patient, but not males, may exhibit precocious puberty, sometimes beginning at the age of two or three years or even younger. And the main manifestation of this is vaginal bleeding. Then breast development and pubic hair may, may be apparent within the first few years of life in affected girls and endocrine disturbances are also seen. The next one is craniofacial uh, fibrous dysplasia that is not restricted to a single bone. And these lesions are not well circumscribed. Commonly, it extends involving the maxillary sinus, zygomatic process, and the floor of the orbit and extending towards the base of the skull. So this is the appearance of craniofacial dysplasia. There may be severe malocclusion, 
bulging of the canine fossa or extreme prominence of the zygomatic process and that causes a marked facial deformity. So the radiographically, there is type 1, type 2 and type 3. Type 1, there is a small unilocular radiolucency and type 2, the pattern is similar except that there is increased trabeculation. In all these types, generally the cortical bone become thin and there is expansile nature of the growth. There is displacement of the roots of the teeth and occasionally they show resorption. And in craniofacial uh, fibrous dysplasia, there is radiographic thickening of the base of the skull. And type 3, it is quite opaque with many delicate trabeculae and this gives a ground glass appearance which is very uh, typical in fibrous dysplasia. And characteristically, this is not well circumscribed but uh, blending to the surrounding bone. In all these types, the cortical bone becomes thinned and there is displacement of the roots of the teeth. And in craniofacial fibrous dysplasia, the characteristic finding, as I've already told, is the thickening of the base of the skull. Treatment is surgical removal and lesions that are not circumscribed, that is block resection, then radiotherapy, radiation therapy, and the prognosis depends upon the degree of involvement of the skeleton. And the main complication is that the fibrous dysplasia there is chance of uh, transformation into osteosarcoma. So with this, I conclude this uh, topic and thank you.